Oh, and in this video, we're going to be using OnShape to uh, create this hot cam. Uh, this hot cam has parametric value, so we're going to set up our parametric value uh, and then create this uh, cam in one sketch and one extrude. Uh, there's a variety of ways to do it. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on using these uh, dimension values to create it. You could also use a circle, this construction circle, and use a lot of constraints on that as well. Uh, so first I'm going to be in my uh, Onshape, I've already created a part studio called Hot Cam and we're going to start by first doing a, uh, before we do our sketch, we're going to come over on the right hand side and uh, set up those uh, parameters. Uh, so I'm going to come over to configurations, the top box, and hit this drop down and do a configuration variable. Uh, first one I'm just going to name is diameter, if I can spell it correctly. And I'm going to set the default to 2 inches. Again, you can change this if you need to. And this is going to be my uh, length of integer value. So I set that as my first variable. And then I come down to this bottom. And again, a new configuration variable. And this is just going to be the size of the hole in the middle. So hole, I'm going to default that to a quarter inch or 0.25. Again, these are easy to change once you have them set up. Here, I'll green check to accept. And now we have those configurations. Uh, you can downsize this box by clicking on it and we can start working on our sketch. So I'm going to do a sketch. I'm going to go on the front. doesn't have to go on the front, uh, but I like to start on the front. Uh, then if we look back, I'm going to start by making this uh, circle here on the outside. Uh, you can see it's got a radius of D divided by 4. So I'm going to start by doing that. So I come back over, select my circle tool, and all I'm going to do is roughly place it in the right area, make my circle, and then dimension tool and set my value. When I type in, I can do D and it gives me the option of diameter or I can uh, type in hashtag diameter. So I'm going to just uh, hit down or click on that diameter. And then in, in this case, it said radius of div was divided by four. Since we're doing a diameter on this dimension, I'm going to divide it by two. Hit enter and that gives us our value, in this case of one. Uh, then if we look back, it also shows us it's D divided by eight from the base, so a diameter divided by 8. So I click on this center point, and then I click on my x axis, and again I'm going to do my diameter. So I start typing diameter, I can click on that drop down, and then divided by 8. And that locates me in my vertical direction. Uh, then in the horizontal direction, away from the y axis, I click on my center point, I click on the y axis, and this one's the diameter divided by 5. So if we look D divided by 5. So I'm just going to start typing diameter, click that box, divided by 5, and enter. And that locates our first circle. Uh, you do the same thing on the other side, or if you don't like doing the extra work, I'm just going to click mirror. So I'm going to hit mirror, I'm going to select that y axis for my center line, and then I'm going to select that circle we just created to mirror across. Uh, so that gives us that second circle. Uh, if we look back, there's a third circle down on the bottom, and it shows a radius of D divided by 10. Again, we're doing diameter, so I'm just going to divide it by 5 instead. Uh, we could change the radius, but I'm just going to keep it in diameter. Uh, so I hit my circle tool. We saw it was on the axis, so I'm going to go on the axis, somewhere down below, and click, and then you do my dimension tool and bring it down. Again, diameter, so we hit that diameter, and this time it's divided by, 10, divided by 5, slash 5. Enter, and that gives us our value for that circle radius. Then we have to locate it. So if we look back, it's D times 9 divided by 20 down. So we come back over. Uh, we hit our dimension tool. We're already on. Set in point to that axis line. And we saw it was 9 times, so shift 8, diameter. So I start typing diameter. And then divided by slash 20. Hit enter, and it locates that circle for us. Uh, next, we'll do the roller circle on top. So on this top part, there's a roller circle. Uh, so I'm going to hit a center point circle. I'm just going to go on the axis for now. And I'm going to make a circle. And we're going to dimension it the same distance from the center point over, which is going to be our diameter divided by 5, slash 5. And that gives us that roller diameter. Uh, then we need to have it touching both of these circles, so I'm going to hit my constraints and go down and find tangent. I click my circle, and then I click one of my larger circles, and that makes it tangent to those circles. Uh, then once I've done that, I need to add lines here on the bottom, so I'm just going to use a line tool. 
I'm gonna make so it's touching uh, my bottom circle, and I want to make it tangent to this first one. So first, I'm gonna show you. Uh, you could make so it's tangent by seeing the constraint. I'm gonna come way off, and then select my tangent tool, and we'll make it tangent by clicking on it and clicking on our circle. And then I'll do the same thing on my bottom circle. Click on that. Click on that, and you can see it's tangent. Uh, well, we have a little extra hanging over. I'm gonna cut that off here in just a second. Uh, same thing on the opposite side. So I'll go for my bottom circle. Uh, if I'm on my line tool, I go from my bottom circle up to my top one. Again, I'm going to go way past it. This time it's already sewn tangent. So when I select my tangent tool, I should only have to the line in the bottom one. Uh, if you didn't have it tangent already, you may have to do the top one as well. Uh, next, we're just going to use our trim tool, which is the scissors up top, and trim off the extra lines we need. So it extends out here, extends out here. We don't need those. On the interior, I don't need this inner circle. I don't need this inner circle or this inner circle or this inner arc or this one. And then I don't need this outer arc either. So that trims up. If we zoom in, we don't need these two lines as well. We have that roller diameter on top. Uh, finally, we need a hole that goes in the middle. So I'm going to do a circle and go in the center and set that value by hitting my dimension tool and clicking on that circle and just typing in hole and then select the whole hashtag hole. You could type in hashtag hole as well. And that gives us that inner hole where the rod can go through. Uh, now we're done with the sketch, it's fully constrained. So we hit our green check. And finally, we're gonna extrude. So I come over extrude, I click in my object, I'm gonna turn it just so you can see it's extruding. And in this case, I'm gonna go 3 16 of an inch. Uh, hit enter, and that gives us our shape. Uh, so hopefully this helps you to create your hot cam. The last thing I'm going to do is rename it as a hot cam to make it easier on our assembly. Uh, so hopefully this helps you, and thank you, and good luck.